Azawad fighters rejoicing in their victory against the Malian army. These armed men from the national movement for the liberation of Azawad have accomplished in months what they had failed to achieve in half a century of struggle. Now they have planted their flag in towns across the northern two-thirds of Mali. For these Tuareg fighters, the liberation of Azawad has always been their ultimate goal. And now they believe they have secured it. But ask them questions about both external and internal challenges facing their independence project. And their answers seem to be inspired by no more than the revolutionary zeal of the moment. They shrug off the absence of any outside recognition of their declaration of independence and the threat of military intervention by the West African Group of Nations, ECOWAS. Only we have the right to decide who controls Azawad. We don't care about ECOWAS. The world has to know that everyone has the right to self-determination. The ECOWAS failed to enforce security in Nigeria or in Abidjan and the world has ignored the suffering of our people who fled to Mauritania, Niger and Algeria. What's more difficult to understand is why these nationalist rebels left the center of Timbuktu and some other areas to the control of rival groups of fighters, some of them hoping to establish not a Tuareg nation but an Islamic state. Regarding the Ansaruddin group, those who are Azawadis, we can deal with them as we used to do in the past. But those who are foreigners, we don't know anything about them. Saudi Arabia, the US and all the other nations are suffering because of Al-Qaeda. They could not find a solution to it. How can we? Logical enough, but the Tuareg rebels are now facing the impossible task of getting rid of the armed groups in their midst, while trying to secure international recognition for an independent homeland. Liberating Azawad may turn out to be the easiest task. Ahmed Val, Al Jazeera, Timbuktu.